Well, one Australian who doesn't rely on technology, just brute strength, is Melbourne's Stephen Pate. And he's riding in the blue ribbon event of the championships, the professional sprint. This is a sensational performance. Look at him go. Stephen Pate down to the line. At the moment of truth for Stephen Pate. Gifkin in front. Pate comes at him down the outside. Gifkin, Pate. And Stephen Pate in straight heat. It's a race of two now with 100 to go between Pate and Rick Sloan. Sloan goes at him. Pate has a look over the shoulder. He's got it one. Five gold medals to Stephen Pate. And Pate now attacks Lee One and Grenda tries to go to them. Lee One taken by Pate and Pate wins. In the side, it's a great race. And Simpkins got two on the lead. But Pate down the outside. Simpkins. Pate. Stephen Pate is built like a ball. His strength is matched by his courage and his blistering speed. Pate turned professional at 19, when mysteriously he was left out of the Australian team for the 1986 Commonwealth Games. He had plenty to prove in professional ranks, and he did just that. Pate's grabbed them, and he raced to the lead on the home turn, and the world champion's far too good. He's got them covered at the 150 metre mark. He's come from 80 metres down to the belt. He'll get up on the line, he had handicap. Pate's taking the lead, he's come to the track, and he's going to flip them. Fading as Barker, Pate went out for the miners, but Pate... Pate is one of the fastest bike riders in the world. He is the world professional sprint champion. The world record for professionals is held by Urs Fuller at 66.60, and Pate is right on target. Now, can he take that world record and take Vinnie Cones with him? He is fairly flying. Now Vinnie Cohn watches on and he knows that Pate's going for a 62.8. The world record is 66.6. Pate is noticeably tiring. He will miss Vinnie Cohn's record, but will he take the record within the professional? He does. Two world records within five minutes. Besides this world professional kilometre record, he's the reigning world professional sprint champion. The grandest title in pro cycling. And though he suffered his share of hard knocks, as any bike rider does, Stephen Pate remains the raging ball of cycling. Pate will remember these championships in Lyon as a turbulent time. In the semi-final, he's outpaced by Kamiyama of Japan. So Kamiyama goes on to race Italy's Claudio Golanelli in the final. Pate, meanwhile, must ride off against another Japanese, Matsui, for the bronze medal. The pressure's on him. In his best of three ride-off, Matsui has won the first heat. Pate has to win the second heat to keep alive his chances of third placing. Psychologically, at the moment, Eddie, he'd be suffering somewhat uh, with his position uh, having now only riding with the bronze and having already been beaten by Matt Sweet. Oh yes, David, he must be absolutely shattered psychologically now. But he's got to get himself together, he's got to get his act together, get psyched up and uh, try and bring back a bronze from this. And if uh, Pate is to stay in this competition and go for the bronze, he's got to win this one as he comes now up the front and uh, Matsui is behind him in the best position I would think at the moment as Pate starting to go for it and Pate really throwing his bike round he's just got to go around that banking and Matsui's coming over the top of him they're down the finishing straight now and it's Pate on the inside Matsui above him and Pate's dropped down into the blue and oh I would not like to decide who got that one it was 11.15 at the time for the last 200 metres but uh, my goodness, Eddie, going down inside the blue like that, is that legal? I don't know, actually. But I think it's a bit of a borderline case. He actually came off the track, so I don't know what the commissaire is going to say, what the judge is going to say about that. And he's, he's given everything. His shoulders are rocking. He took him rather high, too, didn't he? Yeah, but I, I think uh, it was legal because he wasn't inside the sprinter's line. Now and he's, he's off the track now. I don't know what the judge is going to say about that. Well, we'll have to wait and see. Well, they're coming close. Let's see if we can judge who won this one, because, my goodness, it was close and just on the line. Well, I don't know. It looks to me as if Pate probably marginally got it, but we'll have to wait and see on that one. We go back to the professional sprint and remember that Matsui of Japan and Australia's own Stephen Pate are locked at one all in the write-off for the bronze medal. Now then, at the stake is a bronze medal this time, and, of course, contracts that go with it if uh, Pate manages to win this one. Then Matsui in the front in the white jersey and Pate's dropped down, the bell's coming up now. Pate's got him up above the blue line. That's a good position to hold him high, isn't it, Eddie? That's right. In the first one, uh, Matsui laid out and Pate could get round him. Well, he's come down in the Oops, he's, oh, come oh. down. he's taken him down right out. That was a tremendous uh, swerve down the banking by Pate and he ran straight in. I think he did. Well, I'm not quite sure what happened then, but 
uh, or did he hook his wheel away? So the Japanese rider has gone down just when we thought they were setting themselves and this is one of the problems of professional sprinting at this speed. Just a touch and off you go. And let's look at that again. Take us through it, Eddie. My goodness. Steven Pate offered uh, Matsui the inside there and as soon as Matsui went for it, he closed down on him. And, and yes, it, it touched wheels, I think. Yes. And uh, Matsui came down quite heavily too. There he is, you can see Pate coming down to close the door on Matsui. Matsui doesn't react quick enough. I think his pe Pate's pedal actually hits Matsui's wheel and down he goes, crash. Well there oh. he is and down he went and uh, we've got the information up here. In fact, that Pate has been disqualified. So last year's world champion is now out of the race in more ways than one. And so lying on his back is the bronze medalist in the world championships. This is sparkling Maibashi Stadium, also called the Green Dome, where 15 World Championship events were contested on a banked 333-meter plywood oval. With its smooth surface and steep 42-degree bankings, this new velodrome may be the fastest in the world. One of the most appealing events is the Professional Kirin, a race that was added to the World Championship program in 1980 at the suggestion of the Japanese. It's a five-lap, 45-mile-an-hour roller derby. All racers are obligated to remain behind a pacing motorcycle until one and a half laps remain. They fight for position behind that cycle, and there's an advantage to being near the front of the pack. The Kirin is about speed. With more on this race, here's Phil Liggett, who calls these races in Europe. The nine riders into the final, the first three home, take gold, silver, and bronze. The rider in blue there, the defending world champion, Claudio Golanelli. Coming round the lap this time, there's one lap to go to when the motorbike will leave them at that point. Furler now trying to hold his position in that red jersey. Stephen Pate of Australia has found his way out from behind the bike and he's actually trying to force Furler up the track. Now over the bike as he peels off. Pate goes first. Furler tries to take his wheel. Patrick de Rocca, the former bronze medalist from France, is out of it now and there's a clash of pedals there as they go for gold. Pate looks over his shoulder. Michel Barton close on his wheel. One lap to go now. Pate of Australia, the former spin champion of the world, goes clear. Michel Barton of Belgium tries to come up. No hold barred now. He tried it. He's flat out. Hoofner is in third place. Sees the door on the inside. Open by Pate. Takes it well. Gets inside that red line. It's and gone down as the rocker. And on the line, I think Pate has got it. But I'm sure, too, there'll be an objection by Michael Hoofner of uh, East Germany. And let's have a look again at that spin in replay. This is Pate of Australia. He was below the red line, but he went above it to elbow Michel Barton out the way. He left the door open, and the red line is a sprinter's line in the last 200 metres. The man inside it first has the right of way. That right of way is Michael Hubner on the inside now, and Pate, clearly annoyed about that, fights all the way back, but goes himself inside the red line, and in fact, he pushes Hubner here, watch this, onto the blue ribbon and off the track. At the back, you can see that Patrick de Rocca, in fact, hit the back of Pate's wheel as well. And that could be another reason that could get Pate disqualified. And he has been disqualified. The winner is Michael Hubner. Another slice of history at these World Championships. And there is a very disappointed and very annoyed Stephen Pate of Australia. <laughs> what makes you say he's annoyed, Phil? Michael Hubner celebrating... Uh, this competition he's had in the last few days. As you can see now, a new one, though, underneath. Put the shoulder into Pate, but Pate didn't move. No uh, love He's loss. quite steady on No, definitely no love loss. Here we see the collision there. You can see Pate trying Drop to that. run him off. And uh, new one straight into the, straight up the track and into him. Well, I suppose there's, uh, it's not quite a non-contact sport, but uh, in the previous time these two were out on the track, it was a, a real sensation because after a lot of cat and mouse, we'll just leave this and have a look at what happened. That's yawned in front, Pate coming from behind, they'd ridden one and a half very slow in the previous laps, and then Pate made the move, Nguyen goes up the track, and promptly comes off. So
And if those two riders continue, oh, and they go down. Tim Quigley touched the back wheel of Tony Davis, and they have fired a double gunshot, stopping the race. We have got riders all over the track. Quigley must have just glanced for a second, seeing the field coming up behind him, and touched the wheel of Tony Davis, went down on the track, and now we have guys laying everywhere. They have neutralized the race with just a couple of laps remaining. One of the riders down on the infield is Stephen Pate. And that is a big, bad news problem as far as the rider of the year standings are concerned. He is down on the infield. Looking over him there is his teammate, Danny Day, who's now standing up. And another one of the Australian riders. There's Tim Quigley walking away. He is the one that touched the wheel and went down. Just one of those things that happens. But this is a big development in terms of the rider of the year standings at the Lehigh County Velodrome. Marty Nostein benefiting from some bad luck to Stephen Pate. Picks up points that he needed with one race to go in the morning call rider of the year. It's going to be an interesting one indeed. And we'll be back with the final race when we return. He's on the track now. The field made up of the top 12 riders in the standings. And here's the way they stack up. The only two that count for anything as far as the rider of the year points are concerned are the top two. Stephen Pate with an eight-point lead over Marty Notstein. 40 points up for grab in first place. And the situation for Notstein is that he has to finish a place ahead of Stephen Pate and in the top three, or else he's got to beat him by a couple of spots in this final event of the night. The medical people have told Stephen Pate not to compete. They suspect he has internal injuries, bruised liver, bruised kidneys. He was actually spitting up a little bit of blood following the crash in the men's 10-mile event. But he is a tough Australian rider, and he has said, I'm racing to win. I'm not going to take this one sitting down, and he's out there. Tony Davis, the defending champion in the morning call rider of the year standings, is the guy leading the race. He was also figured in the crash. He was just in front of Tim Quigley, was slowing down, and when Quigley glanced over his shoulder to see the charging field, it was Davis who swung up into him a little bit and caused the crash. Rodney Magoo contentious to go to the front. We're down to the last three places. I would uh, ask Stephen Payton to take a position. They come down now. There's a rider to go this lap. And a 
Rodney McGee and Stephen Pate, the two experienced riders. Stephen Pate, perhaps the uh, brilliance over the uh, other rider, but uh, it may be a grinding affair. Well, we'll wait and see. Uh, he's trying to force Rodney McGee into leading out. He's Rodney McGee does lead out on the lead. Stephen Pate will do this one. Rodney, uh, he also wants to lead from the front. But uh, I think Stephen, he's got himself around in the early stages. Uh, Rodney's starting to move down the track now. Stephen Pate. was eliminated early in that uh, elimination event, so uh, he will pick up eight points for his effort as well. So Stephen Pate showing his versatility here at the Adelaide Superdrome. The former sprint specialist now turning his attention to endurance riding, combining with Tim O'Shaughnessy brilliantly here at this world-class venue. He's now trackside with our own Russell Fairfax. Well, Stephen, for a guy that hasn't been on the track for nearly 12 months, you're finding your legs very well. Uh, when you get to my age, you just put the gear up a bit and um, give it your best shot, really. It's a good race out of the elimination, isn't it? Uh, a, a real test of endurance. Yeah, I think it's a real crowd pleaser. Like, you know, it's a pretty exciting race, and uh, there would have been a few close calls there, so it really gets the people on their feet. I guess the miles you've been doing have held you in good stead this, this evening. I think they have. I'm a bit surprised. So, no, it's really great. You know, I'm enjoying it. It's been a great start to the summer, really. Steve, thanks for talking to us, and I guess from now on you might take another 12 months off before you come back. Thank you. Thanks.